I know it. I know it's on. Good. It says on. You're good. Good? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's bring personnel committee to order. Personnel. <coughs> INS, I mean, I mean, Improvement <laughs> Services. Oh, just sorry, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flashback to yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I needed a uh, motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of uh, September 28th. Motion to approve. Motion by Vanderly, second by Nenning, under discussion. Here, none, all in favor? Aye. Please, motion carried. Approval of the agenda. So moved. <coughs> by Worry, second by Vanderly's, under discussion. Here, none. All in favor? Aye. Nays. Motion carried. Number three, consideration of a possible action and request by Jody Hakes to rescind the special waste collection charge of $70 at 1483 Western Avenue. Director Grenier. Uh, let me see the date. 8-17, so August 17th, uh, there were sofas collected in front of 1483 Western received a letter from uh, the property owner manager stating that he's contesting the invoice for several reasons. The bulk items were not col uh, col that were collected were not from 1483 Western as indicated. Uh, items collected were not in the area that their trash or bulk items would be placed. And finally, the items were not on their property before or at the time of collection. Uh, feels that the items were collected from the parcel uh, next door. And what we have uh, are a couple of photos. If you look in the back, we're showing where the items were collected from. This photo looks a little weird because we actually picked up uh, some item in the mirror of the, the vehicle. I'm going to have two photographs, uh, one photograph and one aerial photo that I want you to look at. Uh, 1483 is the parcel that was identified. This is where we collect, where, where staff said they collected the material from. It was immediately adjacent to the driveway, and the property owner has indicated that the material was actually from the neighboring property next door here. What you'll see in the photographs is this neighboring property's driveway is out on the adjacent side street, and from the house all the way back and along here, there's a large wooden fence, so if the material came from here, they would have had to carry it out along this side all the way down here to drop it. Um, there were priors on this <coughs> property. There was an early set out in 2015, three early set outs in 2011, one of which was voided, three early set outs in 2009 two of which were voided because of the previous ESOs. Staff is not allowed or doesn't have the ability to issue uh, any kind of a, a void or a rescinding of those early settles. So we did offer uh, the petitioner the ability to come forward in front of the Improvement Service Committee. I move to suspend the rules to hear from interested parties. Second. Motion by Nenning to suspend the rules for interested parties. Second by Worry. Under discussion, if you're not all in favor, today's motion carry. Okay, the floor is now open. All you have to do is raise your hand and, uh, and I will address you and just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jody Hakes, 1674 Seminole Court, Green Bay, by order 313. Oh, before you start, could you did you sign in? Yes, yes he did. Oh, you did, okay. I forgot to announce it, Steve. That's fine. Um, there's a sign-in sheet for everybody in the audience. So, okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, the main reason, well, as I uh, indicated in the letter to um, the city, or uh, Mr. Greenier, I'm not sure how to say it, but um, I, I don't know that it was the, I know it was on the neighbor's prop, the parcel, and, uh, I contacted, as soon as I got the invoice, I contacted the uh, the uh, city to find out what the items were, which then the female that answered the phone sent me over some pictures so I knew what to try and determine whether it was from the property or not, because have I had 
uh, tenants put leave stuff out there. I certainly have, and I have I have paid some invoices when I when I feel that whether whether I can collect it from them or not, I'll pay for it, especially if it's on my property. But um, I contacted three of the tenants there uh, to find out whether they knew who's. Uh, couch and furniture it was uh, one of them has been there uh, has been a tenant of mine for almost 30 years now and has been very responsible when I ask a question she's always forthcoming she's not a problem a problematic tenant but she, and she also isn't a tenant that if I don't ask she doesn't tell me but uh, um, she indicated that uh, other than that the furniture wasn't where our furniture was so she had uh, she didn't believe it was from any of the other tenants and from my experience in when I inspect the properties if they have uh, you know some issue I normally go there first if, it, if I can't fix it then I contact the uh, contractor so I see inside their units this would be something that would be in their uh, living room and it wouldn't fit in the in the bedrooms so I definitely would see it and I don't recognize the furniture because again I tenants will do what they will, will do but uh, any one of the, uh, the two other tenants indicated that they didn't believe it was anybody's there as well certainly it wasn't theirs but they and in the past when I have an issue somebody always gives somebody up as far as whether it's garbage or whether it's just litter in the in the parking lot you know balls and how many apartments do you have there? I have uh, 22 I believe oh wow okay so you really didn't check with every one of them you just think that uh, you just checked with the immediate oh you mean in that building in that there's four there's four. I, I didn't bother at the the last one because that was the newest tenant. Uh -huh. and um, I knew what I knew what her, her uh, I, I didn't know. I guess I'm not on that report with her that I would necessarily uh, uh, think that she'd tell me anything. And where do your tenants uh, typically put their garbage and recycling? I I can show you on on uh, the aerial view. Of it if you do you have, have dumpsters or do they put it at the curb or what do we do? Yeah. I may have I don't, I don't know if I sent in a picture with the of the aerial I don't no. I don't know I know we we've got one in our okay our um, I think this is here. right right here is always because you can see where the lot line is mm -hmm. I don't have any essentially the, the apron is on the edge if I was on the neighbor's yard mm -hmm. even when I, if I push snow there in the winter they'll call and holler that we push snow in their yard even though there's nothing to so okay. Okay. most of the time something big like that they'll throw in the front yard they'll leave on the other side of the uh, Sidewalk. So, any other questions from the committee? If not, I'll entertain a motion to bring regular order of business. So moved. I have a motion made by Nanny, said by Worry. Under discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Nanny's most carry. Mm -hmm. We're under regular order of business. What are the wishes of the committee? Make a motion to rescind. Second. Okay, motion to rescind by worry, second by Nenning. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, motion carry. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, <coughs> moving forward. Number four, consideration of possible action and request by Green Bay Water Utility to amend section 16.155 of Green Bay Municipal Code regarding compulsory connection to water and well abandonment. Director Grenier. Green Bay Water Utility has been taking a look at uh, Green Bay Municipal Code um, 
relative to some changes that have occurred within the state statute and they had drafted uh, made an initial draft which we have included in your packet uh, received word from law department yesterday that law department has now had an opportunity to do a review and there are some inconsistencies between the draft language water utility has come up with and what's actually written in state statute so they are requesting that we refer this back for two weeks so we can clear those up and we'll bring it back in two weeks for you. Move to refer to the law department uh, to put on a subsequent agenda. Second that. Motion by Nang, second by Vanderlee is under discussion to refer to the law department. You're none all in favor. Aye. Aye. Nays motion carried. Five, consideration of possible action on 2017 Department of Public Works Equipment Acquisition Plan, Director Grenier. Uh, we do have included within your packet uh, our draft capital equipment uh, replacement and new equipment uh, plan. This is something we bring forward separately from the budget each year. Um, especially for the operations division uh, and, San, uh, and the sewer accounts, a lot of these, the money that is used to generate the funds to purchase this equipment comes from the vehicle equipment uh, usage line item in our budget. So we discuss the budget to allocate funds for not only equipment replacement, but also for vehicle maintenance and fuel and all the operating expenses. There's a number of things included that uh, in that equipment usage line item, but we also bring forward our proposed capital equipment plan so that you know exactly what we're looking at purchasing and why this equipment is needed. So this is always done as a separate communication through the Improvement Service Committee. Uh, I've got uh, Operations Director Chris Pierlot here to answer, answer any specific questions that you may have, but uh, Basically what we're looking at in the operations division, we're looking at replacing an aerial lift truck within the electrical section. Um, two units that we have are well over 15. Uh, they're, they're not. What we do is uh, the, new, the new aerial trucks go to the electrical section because they use them daily, right. quite routinely. But we have, we had, should I say, two aerial trucks, they're always you know, previously owned, previously loved by the electrical section in the operations division, in the street section, for banners and uh, other other miscellaneous activities. The parking division uses them to clean windows, that's stair towers. So they get the they get the hand me downs. They were actually taken out of service because they don't meet um, state uh, code for the aerial safety devices, and it would just be cost prohibitive to fix them. So. What we're proposing is to take one of the used ones from electrical, move it down, and electrical gets a new one. But these, these things are used by our electricians every day. Mm -hmm. um, there are two automated refuse trucks in here. When we went to the automated collection a couple of years ago, uh, if you will remember, we made a conscious decision that we purchased some new trucks and we purchased some used vehicles and we also retrofit some. And the entire reason for doing that was so we didn't get seven years down the line and have to replace all of them again. It was always intended that we would have phase replacement. We're into the first phase of replacement. And what we're basically looking at, we've got 16 frontline units with a planned eight year retirement schedule, comes out to two units a year. So what we'll be looking to do every year is there'll be two units up for replacement. And that, again, we, we designed that in from the, the inception of the program. Uh, we're looking at uh, replacement of one half ton regular pickup truck. Uh, we've got two V box spreaders. There are three SUVs that are replacing existing sedans that have just gone beyond their useful life. Uh, if you take a look at several of the sedans that are being used by operation or by engineering division, some of these sedans are, I think we've got one that finally lost a transmission this year that was a 1999. And that's all city miles. There is no highway miles on these vehicles. So we'll drive them until they're ready to fall apart. Uh, the only new that we're looking for this year, uh, a specialty patching trailer and what we've called as a road widener unit that's actually a shouldering machine for gravel shoulders uh, in rural areas of the city. 
again, we've got that red line <coughs> there. That's our budget cutoff line. And the ranks, for those of you who've been part of this committee in the past or heard our discussions, uh, there's quite an elaborate little scoring system that was developed, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, 10, 15-ish. Yeah, it's been a while. Well. We put the, all of our pieces of equipment, including our passenger cars, into and we shake it up and see where the numbers fall out. Uh, we generally like to not exceed a million dollars in equipment replacement on an annual basis, otherwise it has the it has a negative impact on our levy. So about a million bucks is where we try to stay below and we're at we're proposing nine thirty three five hundred. Then we get into sanitary. Uh, we have uh, two laptop computers that are being replaced. Um, we've got some wireless headsets, uh, some sewer pipe plugs as we're getting into more of our, our maintenance and some of the evaluation of these basins with storm and sanitary uh, we have to plug the sewers off in order to do the inspection we've got to be in in the dry if you will and some of our plugs are just old they're they're kind of a rubberized inflatable thing and over time they dry check and then they don't hold there and they don't seal the sewer off so they don't function uh, we've got a new confined space entrance retrieval system, two laptops, uh, two flow data collectors, and a pneumatic vent fan. Um, Stormwater utility, again, we've got some wireless head headsets, some plugs, some data collectors. Uh, because we added a position in stormwater, uh, we need to add a sedan uh, or an SUV to the stormwater utility. Parking division, uh, we've got to replace some existing trash cans, uh, a drain cleaning machine, I believe that's for in the ramps for Correct. the sewers. Yep, the, the storm sewer drains uh, and the ramps. A 2,000 watt generator to replace our existing one, a hammer drill to replace an existing one, uh, some poles for window washing, uh, three vehicle mounted camera systems for, would that be for the enforcement attendants? Enforcement, right. Okay. Uh, and then we're looking at replacing the HVAC system over in the Pine Street ramp. Um, <coughs> then we've got, uh, we're just showing that uh, out of the vehicle account, we're transferring into the construction or the capital account. Uh, we've, we've got $90,000 going into the capital account to build that account up, and then two more multi space parking meter units, uh, 30000 apiece. The last page is. Equipment replacement and new equipment. We're just showing this for illustrative purposes. This is actually all spelled out within the budget. So we'll be talking about that during the budget. Um, the operating budget uh, at Joint Personnel Finance and again at the uh, at the meeting of the Common Council. Again, these are explicitly stated, and then the money gets transferred into the uh, into the appropriate account after the budget is approved. So be happy to entertain any questions you may have regarding the vehicle and equipment replacement plan. Any questions for Director Gadeer? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Um, what what do you want us to receive this, this or to approve No, this would be to approve the, uh, the vehicle to or the vehicle yeah, equipment yeah, replacement yeah, plan. Yeah, motion. Okay. Okay. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve the recommendations. Motion Same. by uh, Nenny, second by Worry. Under discussion, Mr. Vanderlees. Just one quick question, Steve. Uh, uh, just a little bit different topic. What's the feedback now since we've automated the uh, ramp over here on? Uh, in other words, the surface lot. Yeah, the surface lot. By and large, I would say it's been it's been pretty positive. I've not heard a whole lot of. The biggest thing I've heard was folks. Some folks were upset with uh, the elimination of the first hour free. Right. I was going to add. That's that's about the extent but of it. We've, they've enjoyed it for so long. <clears throat> right. Downtown is booming. We're getting more and more people coming down here. We have um, we have a lot more to offer in the downtown than we've had in the past, and we need to encourage turnover in that lot. We had people who were parking in there for extended periods of time. We had people who were abusing the system, and they were abusing that one hour. So you estimated how how long you're going to stay in there. That's how you pay. In other words, when you're putting yes. your money in, if you're going to stay there four hours, you put in eight bucks. Correct. Right? Correct. Yeah. I talked to one of your tenants that was, you know, checking the lot, and 
she said that you know they, they got the two terminals. They got one terminal right. over here and then one terminal over there. She said that's you know very helpful. Yeah. I, overall, we've heard some complaining mm -hmm. about the first hour free going away, but I think most people understand Green Bay is is getting to be. You know, we have some problems that that cities have, and parking is one of those concerns. We have to do this to, to help make the parking system both financially stay viable and to encourage some turnover and make sure we're recovering the money that we need to. Um, I would categorize it as some, some minor grousing. I really haven't had anybody yell or scream about it. How do you, how do you feel that uh, once we get some inclement weather, how's it going to work with the... I, I noticed they're kind of right out in the open on the one side. They're designed to be that way. Oh, they are? Yep. So they don't figure they're going to be frosted over nope. or none of that? Nope. Okay. That was my, you know, I, just from looking at it, I thought, not too much cover there. Nope, nope. We specifically selected equipment that was intended to be out in the elements like that. Okay. And, and those enclosures are unique. They're, n they're not just out of the book. We, we kept them open on the bottom for air circulation so snow and stuff wouldn't pile up inside, people tripping on it. And, you know, so what they wouldn't frost up. And the, and the equipment is built and, and tested for outside use down to. It's nice that you can like use cash center. as well. Right. But, you know, if you, if you limit cash, the cash part, card a lot of people say, well, no, we only got cash. No, nope. so we're, trying, we're trying to make it as user-friendly or different me methods of payment as we can. So, I, I, you know, I think it's okay. Okay. Mike, I'm looking at it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Number six, consideration with possible <coughs> action on 2017 parking division rate structure. This I will turn over to uh, operation, parking operations manager Chris Pierlot. As I do every year, I uh, wax a little bit long on uh, some history and the reasoning for increasing parking rates because park, parking, park is a four letter word to some people, but it's a necessary evil to us. Uh, to any city, especially one like Green Bay and other larger cities. Uh, just a, basically, uh, I'll go through it and summarize it for you. Um, uh, just the first thing to, for everyone to remember, I think we all realize is that city property tax revenue does not contribute any funding to the parking division operating budget, which means whatever money the parking division can and does generate from its revenue stream, those monies are used to pay for the operating budget. So as costs, operating costs go up, revenue has to go up somehow too. You know, and, it, uh, and cost of living adjustments, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, so basically taking a look through, we do this exercise every year. We look at uh, where, how long has it been since last rate increase? Uh, what's, what's our the economics, uh, the, the social environment right now? What's, what's what are trends in the, parking industry, what are our expenses? So basically what it boils down to is, um, and, and the last two pages are just some history of different things like the rental rate increase history, uh, dating back to 2002, I, I could go, go back further, but I think there's enough in there to kind of show you trends. Uh, history of hourly parking rates, I have, have back to 1972. Um, and back to 2000, which is 17 years history of parking citation rates. And then in the body of the report, I explain why we're, we're, we're recommending the increases. Um, just also one more FYI, we have built the operating budget, the proposed operating budget for 2017 based on um, uh, these rates because we, we believe they're needed. Obviously, if, it, if they're not approved, we understand that, that we, we go back and adjust. But the, uh, the, the recommendation is at the bottom of page two. There are eight basic recommendations. Number one is to increase the rental parking rates by 2%, basically kind of a cost of living adjustment. Um, but we would maintain the hourly parking ramp rates and the parking meter rates, no change. So um, uh, we would call those two recommendations being hard to you know, leave them alone. So again, just for clarity, the rental rates that he's talking about under item number one, <coughs> that would be our monthly parkers. Right, the people who get passes from us to park in the ramps. That, that'll be going up by 2%, but anyone who just comes in pays for an hour or pays at a meter, that those rates can stay the same. Right. Uh, we take a, took a look at, we, had, we don't have a rampant uh, problem with uh, uh, 
abuse, if you will, of disabled parking stalls, but the trend is starting to go up. We issue, issued last year about 250 disabled parking citations. We have had years where we had less than 100. Um, uh, the, the trend right now, even in the state of Wisconsin, uh, there's one city, it's not even Milwaukee, I think it might be Madison, they charge $300 for a disabled parking violation. We're at $100, we've been that way for some years now, we're recommending that go up to 100. 150 and that only that one citation rate the other citation rates would remain unchanged uh, and then a past due uh, when a the citation is five working days past due which is a week because obviously we don't count the weekends work days. if it's more than that we, there's a five dollar surcharge that added on um, and if it gets past the month ten dollars on top of that so if if you're late it's fifteen more dollars the five dollars plus the ten dollars well that hasn't been changed for a while administrative costs have gone up you know the, the, uh, and we haven't changed that since it's been quite a few uh, years well, not quite a few since 2004 that's a decent number of years mm -hmm. that's 11 uh, 13 years so we're proposing recommending that the five dollar the plus five dollar goes up to plus seven dollars after a week and then the plus ten dollar go up to plus fifteen dollars after a month. And those two pass through charges were actually asked about when we brought the parking rates forward last year. There was actually a discussion from the common council and on the floor as to why we didn't increase those rates. So we did go back, take a look, decided that there probably was an adjustment needed on those. So we did make that adjustment this year. And then uh, the ne next and uh, next to last recommendation is um, parking meter hoods. Used by you know, contractors and special events, if, uh, uh, but if someone needs one, you obviously have lost revenue, and then there's a cost of us going out. We, we, we have the hoods, we make them, we maintain them, put them out, maintain them, take them back in, get them made. And I, I actually have a spreadsheet. We calculated it out, and it comes out to a, you know to pennies under ten dollars per hood per day that it costs the parking division to provide that service. That includes, of course. Of course, the average loss to meter revenue. So we're recommending that that six dollars per hood per day go up to ten dollars per hood per day. The last recommendation is uh, some or all of you may remember back way back in 2001, we initiated along with uh, DGBI kind of uh, cooperative when the downtown uh, was start to change its, um, you know, the, you know, just just the, the what was happening downtown. We called it the Green Bay Gold Parking, you know, turn your green into gold. There was a slogan, there were handouts. It started out mediocre and now it's down the hill. Yeah, it's basically non existent. We we get maybe two thousand dollars a year out of that program and really all it is and that was the no charge parking on evenings and weekends. Uh, at this point we're not asking to phase, to phase that out, but that is part of that program. Uh, that's something we're going to be looking at and bringing back for a potential discussion next year after all the new parking equipment is in that was approved for installation this year um, but the big thing is um, uh, is the the token program you know like the tokens we sell less than two thousand dollars tokens a year that's forty dollars a week and we had to have these tokens minted then they disappear, you gotta get more minted. It just ends up costing a lot of money for a program that isn't going anywhere. Um, we've tried to revive it so, you know, several times. This, this is a spin-off of uh, those of us who remember, or probably everyone in this mm -hmm. room, uh, the old uh, P-stamps, P-stamps where you go to Prangies, if you bought something, you show your receipt and they put the stamps on you, on your spitter ticket to validate, uh, so you get the free hours of parking. It was, it's actually a spin-off of that program and that dates back to when I was really young so we're, we're recommending that we phase that program out we would talk about how you know free evenings and weekends later but really the t it's the tokens right now that we'd like to phase out so and, and that's the, the the whole basis is those eight bullet points for our um, uh, rev, uh, revenue modifications for next year. So I, I would categorize what our request is very modest increases in in the parking rate structure for 2017. We, we've so what would the excuse me what would the rate then be for let's say a 
the person that's parking that buys a pass for every month? Parking for well, every it depends because we do <coughs> offer volume discounts based on the number of stalls that somebody uh, rents from us. Um, I'm going to see if I happen to have. Yeah, but uh, say if you're an individual, just be John Q. Public. I well, work downtown. Okay, let, let's see here. Steve might have for, the exact, but for it's. Comparative purposes, uh, somebody who parks at the Cherry Street ramp and it's only one person you're coming in buying a single pass. For 2016, that person's paying $72 a month. In 2017, that would go up to $73.50. That's the most expensive facility we have. Okay, so the women working over at the bank over here, they decided to get a permanent parking space at 70. <coughs> right. that's, and that's only if they're at Cherry. <coughs> Instead, renting at Pine, because Pine's an older facility, um, the Pine rate, Pine ramp rate in 2016 is $62.70 a month. That's proposed to go up to 64, so a dollar thirty increase per month. So again, we would consider these to be extremely modest. Uh, again, we're only trying to make sure that our revenues balance our expenditures, and we can cover debt service on the Cherry Street ramp. I know historically a lot of that has been people who work downtown, but are we seeing more and more people who live downtown uh, renting? Uh, we don't necessarily conduct fixed counts on the weekends or at night because we don't have mm -hmm. our staff in sure. at that point, but anecdotally, yes, we are seeing an increase. I know that one of the things that had been discussed within the parking study that we had completed a couple of years ago was a recommendation to begin collection on nights and weekends and eliminate free nights and weekends. Uh, that is something in the implementation plan that we are considering, but before we were to go forward with that, obviously we'd come back and have that discussion. Should something like that go forward, we would be looking, again, starting it at somewhat of a nominal rate, like a, a $2 Every time you go in or out of the ramp, now we'd have to determine if it's pay on entry or pay on exit. Okay, uh, but for instance, you go into the ramp and you you have to pay before you leave. You it would be a two dollar charge, so you might be able to park. If you come downtown to go to dinner, and you're at you're at, you're at a restaurant for two hours, you paid two dollars for parking. If you come home on Friday night and you live downtown and you didn't move your car until Sunday or Monday morning when you left for work, it's still two dollars. So for some people, it's going to be an incredible bargain. For some people, it's going to be market rate. Sure. But again, before we were to move forward with any kind of a program like that, we'd be bringing that back to you with uh, with some recommendations. And as an FYI, comparatively, um, Appleton has a two dollar in. Right on evenings and so weekends. Yeah, and, and again, that's where we're looking at that two dollar figure. It's consistent with other communities and, and their downtowns. So right now, the parking goes till six o'clock. After six o'clock, there's no fee no on charge. the on these. Uh, Correct. And no charge at all on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. That's still you know. Well, what what we found though is okay, the vehicles that leave grit and debris in the ramps, um, the wear and tear on the ramps. That's no different on Saturday night than it is on Monday at three o'clock in the afternoon. Lighting, so elevator if, costs, right. all that stuff. Okay, so if if somebody there's there's an operating cost associated with that ramp, and that operating cost is the same nights and weekends as it is during the work week. So if vehicles are using that ramp during the work week, the nights and weekends should be paying something towards that ramp. How does it work on the cleanup? People that, you know, empty their car and dump their ashtrays and their garbage. Do you, do you have to clean that ramp weekly or daily? I think it's almost daily. Yeah, but we have, we have night maintenance staff that uh, are there. That we have uh, four people that work uh, 10 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. And they, do all the cleaning. And they, they take care of that stuff when the cars are basically all gone. If it was cleaning up ashtrays and bottles, <laughs> I would be happy. <laughs> Yeah, there's that's, more than that. <laughs> that's the generally nice things that we take care of. We have we have a pretty significant uh, homeless yeah, resident population who are living in the stair towers and things of that nature, and what they leave behind is not good. Is not good. Okay. 
Well, I think what you've uh, recommended here is reasonable, so I, I would move to approve the recommendation. Second. Thanks, nice report. That's all approved. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay, there's a motion by um, Netting, second by Worry. Um, under discussion. You're none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nays, motion carried. Seven, consideration with possible action. A report of purchasing manager. The item before you is a recommendation to uh, award the uh, purchase <coughs> of uh, a uh, body for a um, service truck. Yeah, mechanics um, truck, service truck. And this body will be installed on a new Dodge Ram chassis uh, for use by the motor equipment section. Installation is included in the cost. Uh, we had six bids, and we're recommending uh, the award to the lowest bidder, which is Alltech Industries, for the amount of a total amount of forty-seven thousand nine eleven. That includes uh, a hose reel uh, uh, and a um, strobe light package. Okay, anything else? Okay. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Manderley, second by Nanny under discussion. Aye. Hear none, all in favor? Aye. Nays, motion carried. Thanks, Rick. Eight. Consideration with possible action on request by Prohibition Lounge on behalf of David and Lisa Bartakovsky, owner, to amend existing air rights easement to include additional sign and lights within the right of way at 159 North Broadway. Director Kinnear. Uh, owner and tenant already have a home harmless agreement for uh, some amenities in the right of way. Um, while we were over doing some routine work on Broadway, uh, we were notified that there's uh, a sign and two small lights that illuminate that sign that aren't part of the existing hold harmless that are projecting into the right of way. So we simply talked to the owner uh, and the tenant and said, we'd like to amend the existing hold harmless agreement to include all of this so everything's properly captured. Uh, so work. Staff is in agreement with uh, with amending the existing hold harmless, uh, so we're looking to uh, authorize the mayor and clerk to execute that uh, that amendment, subject to the owner receiving all necessary approvals and having the insurance on file. Okay, any questions? So it's basically the cigars sign. Yeah. Correct. That's in addition. Move to approve the request. Motion to yes. approve by netting segue. Worry under discussion. Here, none. All in favor? Nays. Motion carried. Okay. Nine, consideration of possible action on the request by Cafe Madrid to place sandwich board within right away at 225 East Walnut Street, Director Premier. Uh, Cafe Madrid went over onto East Walnut Street uh, from Broadway, and they were looking to have a sandwich board placed outside to announce special of the day or open or what have you. Um, got a lot of these sandwich boards out there that are currently un- licensed we actually have a tenant coming in asking for permission to have this one put out which is kind of rare um, we would confine that to within the area ordered uh, more in line with the trees as shown on the graphic so it stays out of the ada accessible pathway given that in mind uh, dpw recommends approval of the whole harmless contingent upon receiving the applicable insurance insurance the owner receiving all necessary city approvals and authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute the agreement Move to approve. Second. Motion by Worry to approve. Second by Netting under discussion. Here, none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays motion carried. Ten directors report. Okay, just a couple of items for you quickly. Number one, fall loose leaf collection began on Monday. Uh, crews are currently about halfway through the first rotation already. We've got uh, the Monday routes are complete. As of this morning, Tuesday routes were about 60% complete, and uh, they were starting to head into some of the Wednesday routes as staff had availability. We do anticipate getting at least four rounds uh, in and then that, that last one we always kind of play by year to see how many, of, you know, how many of the leaves have fallen, what the weather's looking like, and are we staring down the barrel of snow season? Do we need to get the fleet converted and ready to plow? So fall loose leaf collection is going very well. 
we are currently, I'm sure this will make Alderman uh, weary happy to hear, we are currently working on revisions for the Colburn Pool bid documents with the intent of getting that one out for bid at the earliest possible uh, time. Taking a look at what the bid schedule is looking like, um, if we go absolute earliest, we'd be receiving bids during the Thanksgiving week, and I think that might be problematic. So right now we're looking at receiving bids the Tuesday following Thanksgiving, so that's the goal we're shooting for. Uh, and then just to let the committee know, I do have a document for each of you here. Um, something I've never had to deal with during my time in uh, public works, but we actually have a licensed sprinkler company that has been found violating uh, city policy and codes uh, relative to the issuance of a sprinkler license. So it's egregious enough as reported to us by inspection department, we're gonna be looking at rescinding somebody's sprinkler license. In order to do that, there will be a formal evidentiary hearing that will be held at the next Improvement Service Committee meeting. So Assistant Attorney Folds asked me to pass this message along to you folks to give you a copy of the uh, paperwork that was served upon uh, the license holder uh, today uh, so that you at least have some background on this. And speaking with Assistant Director Burnett, uh, it appears that we have a sidewalk builder who is also uh, doing work without without following the protocol and, and as things are established under under city policy. So we are pursuing uh, revocation of a sidewalk builder's license with somebody as well. So we may have another one of these hearings coming up. Some of this stuff stuff used to simply fly beneath the radar. We didn't have the ability to, to take care of it. As we're trying to get more serious about making sure that our residents are properly covered, so we have reputable contractors that we can depend on. I mean, we're issuing these licenses to protect our, our constituents and our residents here. We need to be responsible to those folks. If we have if we have contractors who aren't playing on a level playing field, we need to be serious about making sure that they do. And revocation of the license comes with that. So, unfortunate we have to get to that point, but. This is what we need to do to take care of the people. Are there fines Literally. associated with it? Uh, right? At this point, the biggest the biggest hammer we have is the revocation of the license, and they simply can't do that work within the city anymore. And if they're caught working without a license, then we'll cite. And that concludes my director's report. Okay. What are the wishes of the committee? Would you receive it in place and motion to receive it, please, a file by Nenny, second by Debater. Is there a discussion? Your amendment in favor? Nenny's motion carried. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Wurzer, Wade, and Nenny. Under discussion here, none all in favor. Nenny's motion carried. We're adjourned.